NFL Week 1 Recap. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier gambling destination and sports gambling destination. I messed up my own ad read. You got it. <laughs> you can watch and wager on any NFL game, any college football game, at any of their five, soon to be six, sport book location. I can't talk tonight, for the love of God. Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot. Coming soon, the sports book at Fitz Casino. You can get more information at tunicatravel.com. You can get our picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Let's jump into the NFL Week 1 recap. I'm going to go first. Fire away. It's a starting 11. We're going to talk about the uh, the, the rise of, of Lazarus coming back from the dead. Okay. Aaron Rodgers. looks. Like he gets carted off the field against the Bears. They're down 20 to nothing. Looks like the season is lost. Everybody at Lambeau is is lamenting even being at the game. It looks like the season is gone before it even begins. Khalil Mack is absolutely running amok in the backfield. He's he's returning interceptions. He he's like a madman. Hair on fire. He's going after everybody. He's he's destroying Deshaun Kaiser and what happens in the well, second he was, half? He was destroying Aaron Rodgers. Too. Oh, I know, I know. He was early, but but when he came back out with with that limp ass leg, a one leg Aaron Rodgers came out and brought the Packers back to glory. Twenty four, twenty three. The Packers win. He was twenty out of thirty, two hundred eighty six yards, three touchdowns. I I mean, what do you what do you say? The Bears' offense helped this out, by the way. They only had 294 yards. When the Bears on the got whole out night. of the script, they started the game off with a, with the scripted offense, like everybody does, and they looked unbeatable. Their scripted offense as was as soon fantastic. as the script Matt was Nagy's over. Great, and you've got to actually game plan and adjust. Man, Trubisky yeah. looked out of out of whack. Um, Aaron Rodgers got let off the hook a couple of times. He threw a surefire interception that 90% of the DBs in the league, maybe 98% of the DBs in the league catch, hit him right in the chest, and that ends the game. Yeah. He got away, but what happens when we talk about this in baseball all the time? If, if you don't take you, him out. If you give him another strike, yep. he let him out. And and here's, what, here's what's crazy, too. Rodgers is unbelievable. The pass to Cobb was just a simple pass, and and it was a good throw. It was well, the a good problem catch. was the defense was was so far up. Every and, safety and cornerback, yeah, Khalil Mack almost chased the guy down, and he was rushing Rodgers. Yeah, I don't know what they were doing on I, that play. I, I don't know. Now, a lot of people I listen to, Mike Lombardi is one of the guys I listen to from the Ringer all the time. He talks about um, the first like two or three weeks of football. The teams that always win are the teams that can play the full ninety minutes um, of football. Just the whole the sixty minutes, sorry, of football. Just the whole game. I was all curious what the ninety minutes. Yeah, was. yeah. just, just <laughs> mistake. Um, real bad at math sometimes. Um, but he talks about the guys that are in shape and the guys that are not in shape. Man, yeah. you could tell the secondary for the Bears not in shape. No, because the first half of the game they were covering Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers couldn't do anything. It didn't matter how magical he was. This doesn't take away from his glory and what he was able to do. But the but the Bears secondary's got to they got to get in game shape. Yeah, I agree. All right, what you got number two? No, number two, I'm going to my Brown Steelers game. I'm going to talk about the good. I'm not worried about the outcome of the game. I'm not. I'm not even going to worry get the other. What if the, if there wasn't a winner? Mm, was there not, even nope, an nope, outcome? Nope, we're not, okay, we're go, not with gonna, we're gonna, go with the good. The good. <laughs> Was Cleveland's defense is legit. Miles Garrett put on the second best defensive display of the weekend, second to Khalil Mack. Yeah. He was a wrecking ball. Ward, listen, I criticized the Browns more than anybody for passing on Bradley Chubb and and um and and Smith um for the Bears linebacker. It broke one. Yeah. I don't know why his his first name escaped me. Because I think those two guys are transcendent players, and I don't think that – I think it's really difficult to um, grade cornerbacks in college. Yeah. Man, they put this rookie on Antonio Brown and said, go get him, son. 
and he did. Yeah. Antonio Brown was held for less than 100 yards. What is he great at? Yards after the catch. He catches the ball. He gets away. He gets loose, and he breaks free. Didn't do it the entire game. Yeah. When he caught the ball, he was tackled. Ward was right there. Ward got two interceptions, and I like to make fun of Ben. I like to get on Ben. Man, those were decent throws. Brown was covered. Yeah. Brown was absolutely covered. This defense is real good. They are much better than advertised and way better than last year. Yeah, I, you're you're right about that. Uh, number three, Patriots 27, Texans 20. An expected result. I mean, the line was six, so, you know, you would expect it. Uh, the story was off the field. Did you see all this stuff on, on Sunday? At NFL Network, Ian Rappaport, like, he didn't even tweet some of this stuff out. It didn't make any sense to me. One, Josh McDaniels, uh, like, his salary had, had not been announced mm-hmm. for what he came back for. He's making, like, head coach money to stay in New England. That doesn't surprise me. So it's, But it, it lets you know straight up he is the heir apparent. We've yeah. all talked about it, but he is the heir apparent to, uh, to Bill. The other report that came out was that the Pats had a trade set up. For Gronk. For Gronk. Yeah, I knew that. I knew about that. And and Gronk told him, no, you trade me. I'm just going to retire. That's right. How is that not a bigger story? And, and let me tell you what I love about that. Being a Pats guy, man, he, he made it clear. I'm only going to play for Bill. I know you tried to trade me. I'm only playing for you. I'm only catching passes from Tom, which also tells you, I think it don't as matter soon what. As soon as Tom I don't retires. Think, I don't think it matters what that contract says. When Dom's gone, Gronk gone. Yeah, and uh, and he he just now I wonder how much of that is. Who do they recruit or go after to replace Tom? And can Josh McDaniels help bridge that to keep Gronk around a little bit? But he made it clear I'm only going to be a Patriot. I'm wearing this jersey my entire career, and that's it. it. Being a Pats guy, I like that. But even if it was a player for another team, I respect that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The the other part from the game. Deshaun Watson needs time. Like he's he's just going to need a little time. We to, saw to get him back. for four games last year. Let's yeah. not hail him savior. Oh yeah, okay. no. But on on top of that, well, no, no, no. We saw him for eight games last year. He won four and, he won, and lost. Yeah, that's four. okay. Won four. That's yeah, right. but uh, but yeah. It, I mean, coming off of an injury takes a little time to get up to game speed. I don't care what you say about the preseason. It's just going to take a little time. What you got for number four? Number four, going back to Cleveland. <laughs> And the I, sense, I sense a trend here. Going back to Cleveland Steelers. <laughs> the bad. The bad. See? So you see what I'm doing here. Okay. The good, I, the I, bad. See where, I see where you're going. Cleveland's offensive line might be the worst in the league. Oh. Now, now, now Detroit I, Detroit might let them off the hook last night. We record this on Tuesdays after all the games are over with. Yeah. Cleveland, they're definitely a bottom four offensive line. Yeah. They went the entire preseason. They moved Joel Benito to left tackle from left guard. He practiced the entire offseason there, moved a new guard in, and then Friday, before a Sunday game, they said, we're moving him back to guard and we're placing a, an undrafted rookie tie, uh, uh, tackle that hadn't played with the ones all preseason in at left tackle, and that poor boy got wore, he, he got wore slap out. out. Now, he might have all the talent in the world, and he could end up being a special, special player. He's got to get some reps. He's got to get some work, and and gotta they got to figure fire, man. they got to figure some stuff out because that offensive line did not look good. Tyrod well, look, Taylor remember. has you, to throw the ball away. I just want He's you to remember to make something. something out of nothing every play, and he can't do it. The Steelers were like top three in the league in sacks. No, they led the league in sacks last year. That that drastically changed after uh, God, what's his name that went out? Linebacker can't walk again. Um, uh, Ryan Shazier. Shazier. If that drastic, go look, go back and look at those stats after Shazier went down. That that number yeah. obscenely changed, drastically changed. Ryan Shazier carried that defense. They weren't even close to the same. He is the Luke Keekley of that defense. When he's gone, they can't play. Well, he's the Joey Bosa of that defense. Okay, okay. Uh, let's talk number uh, five. You got five. Uh, I could say we can talk about debuting head coaches went zero seven, but. Blah. Uh, let's talk about Sark and the Falcons. They have not fixed their red zone offense. They look the exact this, this same as last year. All the way back last Thursday, opening night, when it got delayed and the game didn't get over with until like 1 o'clock in the morning central. Like, look, they had five trips in the red zone and got nine points. Nine points. 
And you know, uh, what's the guy's name? Walter Smart? Like, Smart Football? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. No, I don't. And so this guy, like, he does all the analytics and whatnot, and he looks at, like, percentages of success for formations and blah, 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 blah. And he came out, he said, Sark, you've got to be kidding me. Like, on second down and third down, they or second down and fourth down, when they were down there and they didn't score two different times, they ran, like, they had the same formation, ran the same play. No wide receivers on the field. Why would you take Julio Jones out of the game? But you can't blame when, that. The problem is, is because Julio hasn't been getting anything in the red zone and everybody talked about it, they forced Julio the ball in the red zone. He went one for nine out of all his catches in the red zone. Yeah, no, I, I understand. But like, so, so now he's double teamed and triple teamed. They've told the defenses, we got to get this guy the ball. The defense that's is the saying, thing. If, we're going to cover him then. If you're going to cover him, like it, I'm not talking about getting him the ball. I'm talking they took him completely out of the game. No, if you put him in, then, yes, they will double and triple team him. That that leaves a lot of guys as, open. As soon as, soon as like, Thursday happened, my immediate reaction to that game, I, I love overreaction after week one. It's one of my favorite things to do in the NFL. Absolutely, Steve Sarkeesian, first coach fired. I know that we always talk about head coaches. He's got to be the first to go. He cannot coach in the NFL level. I said it it's, when he got hired. It, it blows he my mind. He cannot do it. It blows my mind that that he led an offense that led the league in third down conversion percentage. Yeah. He went up against a real good defense, maybe the best defense in the league, definitely top three or four. So that doesn't help him. Look, it ain't going to get easier. This week he's got the Panthers coming in. That's a really good defensive yeah. team. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you, you've got to figure out something, Sark, and I don't know that he can do it. You're right. You're All right. right. Number six. Yep. One last time. One last time. I got to go back to Cleveland. Good I gave gracious. you. I gave you the good. So I promise you. I promise you. I'm done after this one. <laughs> I gave you the good defense. I gave you the bad offensive line. Tyler right. Taylor holding the ball. I'm going to give you the beautiful, the good, the bad, and the beautiful. Here we go. All right. What's the What's the beautiful? Ben Roethlisberger. You big dumb bastard. <laughs> You big, beautiful, dumb bastard. What did you call him the other day? Waterhead? Big waterhead. <laughs> every moment in this game, every single big moment in this game that happened, all I kept saying, all I kept yelling to the TV, all I kept texting, everybody I was texting, please put the ball in Big Ben's hands because he's going to screw it up. And every time in this game, he screwed it up. Five turnovers. Man, that is Nate Peterson level. Peterman. Peterman, whatever. And the it, guy it was, needs to be forgotten about. It, like the, the Steelers had We're going to put this guy in the Hall of Fame because he rode the coattails of a great defense and a great offense that was pre-born. What has he done since those first three years in his league? They, they actually had six turnovers. Well, but he had what uh, uh, Connor fumbled one. Yeah. Ben was responsible for five. Ben alone in turnovers – uh, interceptions and fumbles from Ben. Now, now, what's crazy about this is I loved it. I, I I kept wanting him to put the ball in his hands and don't run it with Connor. What what was the did. stat that I heard that uh, uh, what was it that, like the, the Browns the hundred and thirty four? No, to come on now. The all right, it's it's so very since, difficult since to the, lose when the, when you I have a plus it. five. I'm gonna give, give you the number. I'm gonna give you the number. Since the Browns came back, got a team back since 1999. There have been umpteen teams that have had five turnovers, plus five in the turnover margin, okay? Those teams are 134, four, and one. And Cle the Browns are Cle one of the losses. <laughs> Cleveland has two of the four losses. Oh, two of the four? And one of the win. And one in the tie. In the tie. <laughs> but listen now. Listen, we're not going to talk about the outcome of the game. The outcome of the game is... As far as I'm concerned, the game didn't happen. Ties are are meant for soccer, man. All all I know, <laughs> all I know is I just needed them to keep putting the ball in Ben's hands. And there aren't a lot of people that would say that. I don't understand how you can call this guy. This guy's going to go into Canton one day because sports yeah. writers don't understand how these games are played. Since his third season, when he won his second Super Bowl, he has done nothing. Nothing. And those teams that he carried to the Super Bowls were loaded with all-star Hall of Famers everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Uh, number, what are we on, seven? Yep. Seven. Number seven. 
Let's talk about the Dolphins and the Titans. Oh, do we? We're not going to. We're not going to talk long. I'm just. I'm. Okay. I'm discussing the major injuries for the Titans. Not like, good. Like first off, it, it, did you see the fight that broke out? No, because I was watching the Browns. They, okay, that I makes sense. Every second of one Look, game. Look the the fight that happened. There were no penalties. Like I, there and no, nobody got thrown out. I nobody, didn't hear about yeah, that. Yeah, it was like it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. There was a crackback block. There was like Mariota has has hurt himself. Not he didn't hurt himself. Obviously, he got hit. But like he's got something wrong with him. He tried to come back in the game and he couldn't throw the football. Like there's no line right now on this week's Texans Titans game. Because they can't figure out what's going on with Mariota. Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker. Is that the end of his career? It, oh, absolutely. He's 34 years yeah, old. So that's it. Like, that's, yeah, that's I how think, he goes I think down. That's, I think that's how it ends. And it's sad to see because, like, it's he's tough. a fantastic player. But, uh, man, like, it. All right, Mike Vrabel losing his, his first game is one thing, right? Losing it that way. Yeah, it's just lo- tough. Losing happens, but – Losing and and your whole season flashing before your eyes, like that's not a good way to you go. Start and stop the game four or five times, at least oh, two God, monster awful. breaks. Yeah, and then and the then game you, took over seven hours. Then you possibly lose your quarterback. Yeah, which I think they just need to sit Mariota for a while and let him get healed up. I know that's tough to say. And then you and then you lose Delaney, who's been your best, most consistent offensive weapon for the last five six years. Yeah. I, I just – I don't know what's going on, man. I, That's tough. I don't either. Uh, you got number eight? Number eight. We like to do a lot of betting this, in this thing, so my number Believe eight. Believe that. Fade John Gruden and Jason Garrett all year long, and you're going to cash money. Those two guys are just an absolute joke. Is it possible for you to fire a head coach after you just gave him a $100 million deal? Well, yeah, I mean, if I you mean, got this, enough money, but, this but just, they this can't is, because this is they don't have enough money. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. I think that Gruden wants to rebuild the franchise. Like, I understand that that's not the most popular thing to say, but I, I think he doesn't like the pieces that they have, and he wants to build a different team. Is he going to do it around Carr, or is he going to rebuild everything? I think he's just going to rebuild everything. I think he doesn't give a crap about any of this stuff right now. Like Man, I, that's that's that could a be wrong. hard pill to swallow because in the NFL, you can't rebuild that fast unless you no. Got it salary takes cap. like it takes like three four years. That's that's why they wanted assets for Khalil Mack. That's why they wanted. But now we're expecting you know, you're working under the assumption that they're going to hit on all those assets. Oh no, it, it, you never know. But I mean, first like, round they, picks they are a fifty to, fifty shot. They now, want I to guess trade get, for some guys. They this want to, I just don't think this is the NBA where you can say, "Well, I just want as many chances as I can to get the next," you know. Kobe Bryant or whatever. Oh, I'm I'm with you. Like I, I think, look, David Carr has problems. I don't know this problems. I, well, he ever since he broke his leg, he's come back and it's all that dink dunk crap, right? He he doesn't go down the field anymore, and when he does, he's nowhere near as accurate as he used to be. Cooper like, got one 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 catch, one catch, one catch, and and it, he didn't even have that many targets. No, Jared Cook was their go to, and I understand that like John Gruden is a matchup guy, right? That's right. Like he he wanted to go after the Rams' weakness. And that meant throwing to Jared Cook, which worked fine in the first half. Like, the first half, they were good. And you know what the Rams did? Yeah, adjusted, they did because it, they, that's what Wade Phillips does. They, like, they you're, coached. You're supposed to adjust at halftime. Hey, we have a mismatch on this ah. guy. Hey, let's put Akeem Tlaib on him. Yeah. And let's put some linebacker on Jordy Nelson because he's not getting open. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's He can't separate from anybody. Ah. <sighs> uh, Let's say we're we're running close to out of time. Let's try and roll through these real quick. What am I? Um, number eight. That was eight. Uh, this was number nine, right? Didn't you? You said Faye John Gruden. Oh, uh, yeah. Number nine. Let's do. Uh, I completely underestimated the power of Alex Smith in September. I thought the skins were going to be awful. Uh, Alex Smith comes out twenty-one out of thirty, two hundred fifty-five yards, two touchdowns. Adrian Peterson. Old ass Adrian Peterson ran twenty six times for ninety six yards and one touchdown. It's amazing what having a really good offensive line will do, right? This is the same offensive line that pushed the Cardinals around that sucked for Kirk Cousins. And I understand that they were totally injured and all that. But but man, they come back and they are fired up. They are ready to go. Twenty four to six. The the skins beat the cards. Like Washington looks like they could be 
the real deal this year. They looked really, really good. What uh, what you got for number 10? Number 10 is Patrick Mahomes. Now, this isn't his debut because technically he played in week 17 of last year. But he was playing against Scrubs. This, this is his debut. This is his coming out party, and that kid looks real good. He look. I, I actually wrote about this. Kevin Clark has an awesome article about yep, this at the, on Ringer. the Ringer. Yep. Yeah. Highest average depth of uh, target last for the last decade, like for a whole season, was thirteen point four yards. Mahomes on Sunday was fourteen point six. Yep. Let Let me tell you one thing. He's bringing back we, the deep ball, we, baby. We, we want to talk. Let's about, go. We want to talk some Let's fantasy. Go. We want to talk some fantasy stuff. Travis Kelsey supposed to be a fantasy stud tight end. Brother, he don't run deep enough routes. No, he. I think he caught one pass. Yeah, no, it, Mahomes ain't doing that little. No, no, you know, oh, you, if crap. you're not running twenty yards, like, you're not catching the ball. Gone. <laughs> like Tyreek Hill, like all them boys. That, that guy has a laser. You know, it, it, Bill Sammy Simmons. Sammy Watkins is like a fantasy. Yeah, Sim, dream right now. Simmons talked about this a little on his show uh, that I listened to. The guy that I would compare him to that he looked like, and they don't play anything alike. They don't have any style or anything like this. He's got an arm like Brett Favre, man. When the ball oh, yeah. comes off his hand, it looks like it got shot out of a cannon. And we say that about a lot of guys. Man, I hadn't I hadn't seen this. Because a lot of guys can throw it far, and so we say they have a great arm. Man, no. When he His problem is – I don't know. He that, can throw it far, but he, it's also a it's laser. It's a laser. It's yeah. a laser. I mean, what do they call her? Frozen rope? Yeah. Like that, it's one of the cliche far, things. Favre used to always talk about how yeah. some of these guys – I mean, he threw a lot of interceptions because he was a gunslinger. But a lot of times DBs couldn't catch his ball because it was just coming too hard. If you're yeah. not used to catching it, that might be Kelsey's problem. Uh, probably. Probably. Uh, let's let's close out with some extra points just real fast. Well, you got uh, 11. Uh, well, here, I'll, I'll do one of them. Uh, the three highest salary cap hits for 2018 – Combined for three touchdowns, ten interceptions, and three losses. Jimmy G went 15 out of 33 for 261 yards, one touchdown, three picks. Matt Stafford, 27 out of 46, 286 yards, one touchdown, four picks. Derek Carr, 29 out of 40, 303 yards, zero touchdowns, three picks. That's got to sting when you are paying those dudes that much money. One of those guys has a has a smidge of an excuse. What, Derek Carr? No, oh, God, no. Absolutely well, I mean, not. his is that he G got hurt, but G Jimmy G was playing the Vikings, but was playing a legit team, maybe the best team from top to bottom in the entire NFL. Yeah, and and without question, one of the top three defenses. Well, the, in the, the Vikings can make anybody look bad. That's that's anybody that's look it. bad. So I'm not too worried about that. But the the combined, where oh, no. all of them are the that's biggest right. salary cap Woo. hits. Uh, the other things, the Bills are in a lot of trouble. God, they sucked. Nathan Peterman, you you thought his five interception game was bad. His QBR was actually less in this one. Uh, he was 5 out of 18 for 24 yards and two interceptions. His quarterback rating was 0 0.7. Uh, what else did we have? Uh, Sam Darnold's debut was successful. That was good. Savior Sam looked yep. fantastic. You know what I liked about watching him? So he was one of the QBs. We'll get out of here on this. He was one of the QBs that I probably had third in this draft. And um, the thing I liked most about watching him last night he threw the interception, the pick six, to start the game off. He immediately forgot about it. He got back on his horse. When he threw, Played the, great. When he threw the touchdown, he celebrated, went to the sidelines, forgot about it too. Yep. I mean, when you can move on it, from the good and the bad. Super cool. He is cold as ice. Like, he's – I didn't think he was going to be junk, but at the same time, I mean, he, he no, looks he, real. He looks like a legit quarterback. That's going to wrap it up. That is the NFL Week 1 recap.